morning. Welcome to 2024. Happy New Year to you guys. Isn't it wonderful to think through the peace that God has given us throughout the years and that we know will cover us through this year of 2024? I always see the posts as we get into a new year of, I don't know about this. I'm not sure I want to sign on the dotted line for 2024, but we know God's peace will be with us and we know it will be sweet to just trust in him. Go ahead, stand and sing with us as we get started today. We were gone last week and really missed seeing your faces. You make it worth coming. Uh, for those of you who are online, uh, thank you for joining us too. You are in our thoughts and our hearts and our prayers. Just a couple quick announcements here. Let's get my old man glasses. Sorry. Um, of course, our, our thoughts and our hearts are with the Arnolds um, this week. Um, just a reminder, um, services for Norm Arnold are tomorrow at Royer Funeral Home in Grain Valley. Visitation is at one o'clock, funerals at two o'clock, and great si graveside services to follow. Um, so again, just you know, th those notes, um, just letting them know how much we care about them and love them. Um, coming up, 
February 17th, it's a Saturday, is Equip KC. Um, you've probably seen this in the announcements a little bit. So this is um, a district-wide leadership training. Um, we would love to take as many people as we possibly can. It is, like I said, February 17th from 8 to noon in Olathe. Um, please see Pastor Jessica. Uh, we would be more than happy. There's a little uh, registration fee, but we would love to pay for that for you. Um, carpool, it's a good time to be together. So, like I said, see Pastor Jessica for that. Um, Tom is going to come and read the scripture for us. In the glory What's the mic on mountains? Savior and say, this is your year. Bowing down before him, looking for his vision for our lives, looking for what will he has for us, asking for his mercy as we go through this next year. And I know sometimes we get focused in on one problem. What's this problem going to be? I don't know if it's the election for some of you. I don't know if it's a health reason for some of you. That one thing that you're like, I'm not sure about 2024. But what we want to remember is that the big picture is keeping your eyes on God, keeping your eyes focused on him. That one thing of the earth that means so much to you, it's going to pass away. You don't have to worry about it. Keep your eyes focused on God. Everything of the earth will strangely just kind of dwindle. Keep your eyes on him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look for in his wonderful face. 
you see. There's life for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Through death into life everlasting, He passed and we follow Him there. Or no more at dominion, or more than conquerors we are. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, He promised. Believe Him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, His perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. team for leading us to the throne of grace this morning. Hear a very special prayer, uh, the covenant prayer from the Wesleyan tradition. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside by thee, exalted for thee, or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. In the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Let me pray for us. Father God, we humbly come before you this morning, and we ask that you would come close. We thank you for your presence here in our midst already. Today is the day that you have made. And we're setting aside this time to go deeper with you. Draw us deeper, Lord. 
We ask that you would be with each, each one of us this morning. That you would be everything that we need you to be. You know what we're going through. You know all of the unspoken requests. We trust you above all. We ask that your will would be done in all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a reminder about our tithes and offerings. Um, you can give online. You can give through the mail. There are offering plates out in the foyer. Um, uh, we just thank you for um, worshiping in this way. So let me get started. I think I need to grab my coffee. If you can tell, my voice is not normal. I'm fighting off the crud, I think. I think it has begun. I might need it. <laughs> All right. E. D. F. C. D. P. It's a rather odd bunch of letters, isn't it? Does anyone know what those are referring to? And Taker, what they represent, what do they stand for? I bet some of you are going to guess it. Perhaps I said I should ask you, is it better A or B? One or two? <laughs> I'm hearing it goes. Some people put it together. I think uh, some of you are on to me. These letters are what is found on the 2030 line on the Snellen eye chart at your local eye doctor's office. All right, <laughs> we're all on the same page now. I imagine most of us have had to read these letters before, perhaps even struggled to read these letters before. I know that has been the case for me in the past. I now see 2020 at a distance, but it hasn't always been that way. So when I was five years old, starting kindergarten, it was discovered that I was quickly becoming quite nearsighted. I was given glasses at that young age to use for reading. Within a couple of years, I was needing to wear them all the time. And as a kid, I didn't think wearing glasses made me very pretty. So, like most kids, I resented wearing them. But then eventually, I was fitted for a pair <laughs> Is that better? Let's try that. Sometimes it's just weird. <laughs> Where was I? So like most kids, I resented wearing them. Uh, and eventually, I was fitted for a pair, a little like this pair that I have on now that I really liked. A huge, chunky pair with thick, swirly, purple and pink rims, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> I had zero fashion sense as a kid, or style, no sense of style, and not a lot has changed, <laughs> if we're being honest. <laughs> but wearing them made all the difference for me, and I quickly became dependent on them as my vision grew progressively worse over the years. So year after year, step at a time every year, and by the time I was 19 years old, while at my last eye doctor's appointment before losing my insurance, and still in my very first year of college, my eye doctor discovered that my right eye, the eye that had always been weaker than the, than the left, was developing a cataract, of all things, at 19 years old. Already being exceptionally nearsighted with astigmatisms in both eyes, and now, with a cataract, life went on as normal as it could. With my glasses, I could see quite well, up close and at a distance. And eventually, I got my insurance back, and after moving to Kansas City, as a lot of you knew, I know I grew up in Michigan, uh, I found a pretty great ophthalmologist, and together we discussed the ever-thickening cataract and my ever-weakening vision. It was shortly after Paul and I got married that we bought what we knew would be the last pair.
pair of prescription eyeglasses. My eye doctor said that there was nothing left to be done. My vision issues had progressed to the point where it wasn't really possible to get stronger lenses. I was maxed out. And so we went all in on that last pair of glasses. Ultra thin, anti-scratch, transition lenses, flexible rims. They were the best pair of glasses ever. But eventually, that last pair of glasses broke, and they couldn't be fixed. And with scotch tape holding them together, I made an appointment with Silverstein to start the journey toward having cataract surgery at 30 years old. I was, it was around Labor Day in 2020 that I had my cataract removed, and the natural lenses in both of my eyes replaced. I healed incredibly fast and was back to my regular life within a few short weeks, adjusting to basic dollar store readers and my new eye. Some of you already know what's coming next because you were there and journeyed with me through it. Everything was going great at first, but then unfortunately, within six months, some things started to go very wrong. I actually started losing my vision altogether. It was like someone had hung a lacy curtain in front of my eyes, just directly in front of my eyes. And that curtain was growing thicker and denser all the time. It was like I wasn't getting enough light into my eyes. I also couldn't see colors properly anymore. The yellow on stoplights looked orange to me, and the green looked white. And I could no longer see the colors in sunrises or sunsets. All of the colors started to fade from my world. And it wasn't long before I had to stop driving and cooking and cleaning. You can imagine Paul loved that, right? <laughs> Everything I did, I did by touch. I couldn't see the characters on a TV screen anymore. I couldn't see to read any letters on any page, no matter how large. I had to step down from the worship team because I couldn't see the letters on the screen. Everything was a blur. I had to go on FMLA leave from work because no matter how big the IT guy made the letters and the icons on my screen, I couldn't see them. I couldn't see well enough to do my work. I realized that I had actual blind spots and they were growing bigger and bigger. I would get ocular migraines from straining my eyes to see and the fuzzy images before my eyes simply shimmered and swam. Very weird. It was terrifying not to be able to see with my eyes wide open and with all of the lights on and for a time, I was legally blind in both eyes. Life as I knew it was changing very fast. Eventually, we found out that I had developed a film over my eyes due to the surgeries, and I had to go in and have these pseudo-secondary cataracts lasered off. Apparently, this was something that was pretty normal, pretty common, and that they had not forewarned me about. So I didn't know to expect it. It doesn't usually happen to people as fast as it happened to me. And they could only assume that it had happened so fast because I was so young for the type of surgery that I had. And I healed differently than the average person undergoing this type of surgery. This was not the end of the story though, because after the lasers, while my vision did improve some, my vision did not return to normal right away. It took a whole slew of appointments with a neuro-ophthalmologist, lots of fancy vision tests, including MRIs, an appointment at the Midwest Balance Institute, where they discovered inner ear damage, of all things, a dozen visits with a physical therapist, retraining my vestibular system, so balance, 
diagnosing and correcting and diagnosing and correcting a vitamin D and folate deficiency. How odd, right? It took all, me doing all of these things before my vision was officially corrected and healed. Pretty crazy. <clears throat> if our eyes are healthy and they work as they were created to, we perceive images when light waves enter our eyes and hit our retinas where a special cell called a photoreceptor transforms the light into electrical signals that travel through our optic nerves and into our brains. Our brains translate these signals into images, and that's it in a nutshell. Light is essential for our vision. But who knew that there was such a huge overlap between the nerves in our eyes and our ears and our sense of touch. I had no idea how much went into the process of seeing and perceiving the world around us. And who knew that your eyes and your ears and your sense of touch had to work together and send the right signals to your brain at the right time to keep you in balance. I'm so thankful to live in an age of modern medical science, aren't you? Would have never figured all that out on my own. Earlier, I mentioned how scary it was to not be able to see with my eyes wide open and with all of the lights on. You know, we're pretty used to not being able to see in the dark. But seldom are we in such all-consuming darkness that we can't make sense of some of the shadows around us. A few years ago, Paul and I took a tour of the Missouri State Penitentiary. At one point, they took us down into solitary confinement, put us in a cell, and turned off all the lights for just 60 seconds. But those 60 seconds were the longest, eeriest minute of our lives. We could not see our hands in front of our faces. It was that dark. Not one peep of light from anywhere. We experienced pervasive and all-consuming darkness that day. And I think I can speak for both of us when I say that we'd rather not do it again. <laughs> Moving around in darkness, even shadow, can be dangerous. Especially if you're accident prone, like me. Generally unbalanced, or if you fall, Naturally, this is more likely to happen somewhere that you aren't familiar with. And many of us also tend to be a bit afraid of the dark. Maybe some of you are willing to admit it, and maybe some of you aren't. But I know plenty of your kids that are afraid of the dark. So, there's that. It's, and, I, and really, I don't blame them. I think we've all been scared of the dark at one time or another. I think it's pretty normal. And it's not so much the fear of the dark, oftentimes it's the fear of the unknown. It's important to us to feel safe. And humans, even from ancient times, have long associated light, especially light and darkness, with warmth and safety and home. Whether that's from a fire or a porch light or a flashlight or a lighthouse, Seeing a light in the night can mean comfort, hope, rescue, and security. It's not very often that a light in the darkness means something bad. Though a light that suddenly bursts into darkness can be a bit startling and unsettling at first. When I was in seminary, I researched and wrote a paper on the dark night of the soul. Maybe this morning you feel like you're living through one. I know what many of you are going through this morning. And I know that you've seen greener days, brighter days. And the ones that you're living through right now are some difficult ones. 
Maybe you're feeling the heavy weight of that darkness. Maybe you feel like you're stuck in it. Surrounded by it. Suspended in it. Maybe even that you're going to drown in it and be consumed by it. Maybe you feel like all the color has drained from your world. Stop. Look. Listen. Let's regain your balance. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. Isaiah 9, 2. Matthew 4, 16. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death casts its shadow, a light has shined. He is here. Amen. A light has come. Hope has come. God's word tells us over and over again about light. In Genesis 1, in the very beginning, God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and he saw that it was good. And then he separated the light from the darkness. One of God's first creations was light. It is a foundational part of our existence. 2 Samuel 22, 29. O Lord, you are my lamp. The Lord lights up my darkness. Psalm 36, 9. For you are the fountain of life, the light by which we see. Job 33, 28. God rescued me from the grave, and now my life is filled with light. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? Luke 1, 78-79, Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. John 1, 4-5, the Lord gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. John 8, 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. And finally, 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 7. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We now have this light shining in our hearts. But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. We have a choice about where we fix our eyes. When we let God's light that is the love of Jesus, shine into our hearts, then we can see clearly and come alive with the hope that is in Christ. And that's not the kind of light that we should keep to ourselves. Our God is faithful. He is still at work. In every season, if we look, we can find his fingerprints all over our lives. He restored my vision. And even if he hadn't, his light still gives life. He still hangs the moon in the sky every night and allows the sun to come up every morning. God's light casts out fear. 
in God's light and in Jesus' love, we find our hope and we find our home. He makes all things possible. Darkness is always with us in some form or fashion. It can be all around us, ready to envelope us and overtake us at any moment. But where we fix our eyes and to whom we, we put our hope and our trust matters. Darkness is powerless when we put our faith in the Lord. That doesn't mean that the darkness just disappears. It does, however, mean that in the darkest night, his light will shine. Today we celebrate Epiphany. You may have noticed that the candles are still lit. It's still, it's still Christmas. <laughs> On Epiphany, we remember the wise men who followed a great star. A light in the darkness that led them to Jesus, the light of the world. Like the wise men who followed the star on a journey to Jesus, so we too are on a journey seeking Jesus. And like the star over Bethlehem that pointed the wise men to Jesus, so we too are being called to be a light in the darkness that points others to Jesus. Because of what the Lord has done and is still doing in us, we are able to go into the darkness of the world around us and shine his light. And this leads us to the lectionary reading for today. Uh, if you want, please open to Isaiah chapter 60. We'll start at verse 1. Arise, Jerusalem. Let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness is black as night, covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Look and see, for everyone is coming home. Your sons are coming from distant lands. Your little daughters will be carried home. Your eyes will shine and your heart will thrill with joy, for merchants from around the world will come to you. They will bring you the wealth of many lands. And then skipping down to verse 17. I will exchange your bronze for gold, your iron for silver, your wood for bronze, and your stones for iron. I will make peace your leader and righteousness your ruler. Violence will disappear from your land. The desolation and destruction of war will end. Salvation will surround you like city walls, and praise will be on the lips of all who enter there. No longer will you need the sun to shine by day, nor the moon to give its light by night, for the Lord your God will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set. Your moon will not go down, for the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your days of mourning will come to an end. This is the word of the Lord. God's word is beautiful and powerful. still alive and is still active. Arise, shine, lift up your eyes, see, be radiant, rejoice. He is making all things new. He is our everlasting light and our glory. He is our hope and our joy. If we're being called to rise and shine this light and point others to Jesus, how do we do that? First, we must know, really know this light. We must let it into the deepest parts of us. We must let it change us, transform us, and renew us. It is impossible to shine a light that we do not know and are not familiar with 
we aren't in possession of or in a relationship with? How do we let that light in? We let it in by seeking it out. By studying God's word through prayer and trusting in who he is and having faith that his will is good and that he loves us. Through repentance and confession and humility. Through fellowship with other believers and studying God's word together. Through worship, service, sacrifice, through fasting. Seek out what is good, put Jesus first. And pursue lives of holiness and Christ-likeness with the help of the Holy Spirit. Know also that God's word tells us this. The Lord's light penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. Proverbs 20, 27. For anything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open, and every se secret will be brought to light. Mark 4, 22. And Psalm 139, 11 through 12 says, I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. It's important for us to remember that we can't hide anything from God. He knows everything already. And the closer we get to him, the more we must confront those places in our hearts and our, in our pasts. The more we must confront those places and spaces. Those spaces that aren't glorifying to him. This is a reality for all of us. We are all sinners saved by grace. We can't hide from him. Light makes everything visible. Please know this. I'm not preaching fear and fire this morning. If you know me, that's not what I'm about. I'm preaching light and life and love. And I'm challenging you to go deeper in your relationship with the Lord. And I'm challenging you to shine his light in a dark world. I'm not calling you to unobtainable perfection, but I am calling you to the best of your ability to holiness. Arise, shine, for your light has come. In order to shine his light, we must first know him and have received that light ourselves. We have been commissioned to shine that light. And as that light comes to us, we don't simply reflect it or refract it. A reflection would mean that it was only skin deep. Before it hits us and, be, and then it just bounces off. It doesn't go any deeper. And a refraction would mean that while it comes into us, it comes back out of us a little crooked. Instead, this light should shine into us and fill us up and then pour out of every fiber of our being. It should become one with us. It should transform us into a new creation to the point that we can't help but glow because we are no longer the same. People should be able to tell that there is something different. It should bubble up within us, and we should brim to overflowing with abundant light, the light and love of Christ. It, sh it should surge in you and exude from you to all the world around you, because you just can't hold it in. You can't contain it. All that love and grace and peace and compassion and joy just spills out everywhere lavished upon your marriages, your families, 
your friendships, your workplaces, and everywhere you go, and to everyone you meet in between. You may be the only light that someone ever sees. The life you live matters. Your story matters. And the choices you make matter, and the words you use matter. Are you shining his light? We all shine differently. Our strengths and our weaknesses aren't the same. Our gifts and our skills and our experiences aren't the same. Our perceptions and understandings of the world just aren't the same. And that's okay. Some of us were created to shine like small tea light candles. And some of us are created to shine like bonfires. And some like small keychain flashlights. And others like some of the extremely bright flashlights that my husband likes. It does not matter how brightly we are capable of shining, as much as it matters that we shine. And to the best of our ability, shine big, shine small, Shine bold, shine calm, shine near, shine far, shine wide, just shine. Don't hold it back. Don't try to keep it in. Be the person that God created you to be. Shine. Jesus is the light of the world. We are called to be like him. Rise, shine, and go proclaim the good news. Be a light bringer. Be a child of the light. Love well. My friends, can you see? Do you shine? Is God's light getting into the eyes of your heart? Are you letting him in? Do you believe that the Lord is enough? Do you trust him even with the dark places? Do you have a spiritual astigmatism? Is there something in your life or your relationship with God that you have been turning a blind eye to? Have you developed some spiritual cataracts? Are you seeing clearly are your eyes and your ears and your sense of touch working together to keep you in balance and in step with the Lord? Maybe you need to start on the journey of making something right today. Perhaps it's time to remove some planks from our eyes so that we can see better to help our brother or sister to remove the speck from theirs. Perhaps it's time to let Jesus mix his saliva with some dirt and cure us of our blindness. Prayer is powerful. And there's nothing that our God can't do. At this time, I want to invite you to spend some time in prayer. The altars are always open. And then in a few moments, I will pray for us, and then Rachel will lead us in a song. this time.
Father God, you are the light of heaven. Shine in us, we pray. We give you praise for who you are, Lord. And we sing hallelujah for your light has come and is coming again. Lord, we ask you to shine into our hearts. We welcome you into the dark places, our fears. Overwhelm us with your love. Help us to overflow with your love and shine to the world around us. Help us to be a light in the darkness. Open the eyes of our hearts to know you more. Be our vision. Lead us ever deeper and closer to your heart. We want to know you more. Make us more like you. We want to be children of light. We want to be your children. And Lord, we are yours. Give us eyes to see you clearly and hold us together, we pray. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Please stand and sing with us. There is a kingdom in every soul some brightly burning some dark and cold there is a spirit that brings a fire ignites a candle and makes his home so carry I'm sorry carry your candle run to the darkness Seek out the hopeless, confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle, go light your world. Confused and torn Hold out your candle For all to see it Take your candle Go light your world Take your candle Go light your world Receive your benediction. This is from Ephesians 1.18. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope that he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. Live as children of light. Arise and shine and go in peace. Amen.